Hey guys, Dan here from dancetube.tv and you can expect brutally honest tech reviews on the channel. Now I have something a little bit different today. It's quite a long video actually um, and most people watching this who have followed me for a while now probably have no idea what's going on. They have no context. So basically what happened was I was given access to a Mavic Mini Australia group when it had about 50 members, maybe 40, 50 members. And recently we've just gone over the thousand members mark. And basically I've just been taking a lot of pride in building this community and really connecting with pilots and trying to offer a unique experience for the Mavic Mini pilots out there. So I also have um, Keith as a moderator as well. And um, him and I have started organizing different events. So this event is the Mavic Mini community sharing their tips and accessories. And it's targeted more so at beginners, but it will also be really valuable for people who want to improve their flying experience and learn about different accessories and tips. Uh, there's also a giveaway in this video. So this is basically uh, to celebrate 1000 members. So I will actually have a link in the description below to check out the Mavic Mini Australia group. So definitely sign up uh, or join the group over there. And the entry condition is basically you just have to comment on this video and let us know what actually got you into drones. So how were you introduced to drones? What was your ex first experience like with the drone? In any sort of experience or story that you can share with us. And then we will choose two winners uh, to actually choose any clothing item they want from the Eye in the Sky clothing store, which uh, is the clothing store that I founded close to two years ago now, just over a year now, year and a half, whatever it's been. Um, so yeah, that will be the giveaway for two items, whether it's a hat, a singlet, a shirt, a hoodie, whatever it may be, and we're going to have two prizes. Uh, so definitely drop your comment below. What got you into droning? How were you introduced to droning? Anyway, enjoy our interesting discussion around the Mavic Mini and what things you need to know, what you can expect from your first flight. Uh, there's lots of gold in here. So thank you so much for everyone who actually joined the chat, and there will be more in the future. So like I said, follow the Mavic Mini Australia group. And uh, keep tuned, not choned, tuned for more events and uh, you know unique experiences through the group. And like, are there any burning questions or any concerns or anything that you guys want to raise? Anything that you're curious about with the Mavic Mini or the group or just life in general, really? <laughs> How do you see the bloody thing in the air over 20 meters up? I, I had mine hovering above my head this morning. I spotted it. I looked at it. I looked down at my screen. I looked back up and I could not find it. And that, it was just hovering. It wasn't mm. moving. <laughs> but I couldn't find it. Yeah, that's uh, probably quite a common thing, hey, with such a small drone. I saw some people actually in the group today talking about strobe lights or having some sort of light system. Yeah, I asked drone. a question in the group. Oh, that was you. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, some... something I'm working on. It's uh, not mm. successful yet. <laughs> I've got one. I don't know where it is. Um, I've got one that I have on my, on my Mavic. I posted. Is it a Does it attach to the actual top of the drone? No, the bottom. What's the point of putting it on the top? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just thinking for, for takeoff, right? So you'd always have to hand launch. <laughs> Land on. Yeah. It's, um, you put it on the bottom so you can see it when it's up in the air. But then when it comes to landing, is it a flat surface to land on? Or would you have to catch it? Oh, like I see what you're talking about in the mini. I always use legs. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. There's legs for the mini. There is. Yeah, do, you, do you have them, wow. Keith? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's leaving their chair. I'm staying. Yeah, I'm not going what to <laughs> everyone's looking for legs. <laughs> yeah, by the looks of it. I actually yeah. ended up in the DGA, DG, DJ One store near here. Yep. Um, and saw the legs, and the guy put them on one of the minis, and I grabbed them. But I'm now into hand takeoff and landing, so it's kind of like. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I'll oh. use them at some point. I was going to show you the drone. I was going to show you the strobe, but apparently it's in the shed on the dog's collar. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs kept fucking off at night. <laughs> so I messaged put it on the um, dog's collar so we could find the dogs. Great. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that's the legs. Oh, okay. Magic. So there's two. That's, that's the back one. And that's the front one. Oh, nice. 
Oh, okay. So, so it lifts it up a nice height above the grass and stuff. Yeah, I always I, I take off in sand a lot, so I don't want the sand blowing up into the gummings as yeah. you're growing. Um, the front one just literally slides over the leg like that. Yeah. So you got two of them. The back one's a little bit more fiddly, it clips on. Yeah, the black ones just clip on. Yeah. So you have to get them the right way round so they um you see where you've got the the, the um, curve on the leg, so you have a curve on here, so it just snips into there, like that, oh, and yeah. then it drops down. Oh, it actually folds away as well. Yeah, oh. so it folds away. Because you can leave them on and still fold all the legs in, can't you? Yeah, you just, uh, no, you can't leave the front ones, but the back ones you can. That just snaps down. Yeah, but when you actually fold the, yeah, yeah everything still folds away nicely. Yeah, mm. it's just the, just the front ones. Ah, oh, front ones closed. No, front ones closed. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but you could. Well, that actually... So you could leave them on. And you oh, think that would what? fit in the case? Eh? Oh, would that fit in the case? Do you think? That's only yeah. fits in the case. Here we go. Yeah. Live demo. Yeah, is this was a <laughs> live demo. Hey, <laughs> hey, all the new people joining. Well, Review on command. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it doesn't fit. That was the answer to that. Oh, there you go. That's not quite. But yeah, so you get an extra sort of inch on the front, half inch on the back. Not too shabby. There's that that's just enough distance. So that's that's the front with it down and that's mm. Yeah. So that makes all the difference in terms of where your camera is. You see the clearance now? Yep. Mm. Yeah. And that's where it's folded, folded away, isn't it? The front legs? Oh, yeah. There you go. So you get even more. Yeah. So, it's, uh, so, so how do you attach your strobe to the bottom of your Maverick? Maverick. Just a bit of Velcro. Yeah. Just Just Velcro. Velcro on the yeah. Oh, around, the, around it. Oh, yeah. No, but what about the, um, the heating yeah. vents there? No, the, this... Where the, where the power button is. Oh, okay. Just, just put it on there. Thank yeah. you. And does it make a big difference? Like you'd recommend it? It does if you're flying at night. Who <laughs> 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 no, no one does that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I mean, it, it would help with, with silly, with old fella eyes like mine. Bloody fine in the yeah. damn thing in the sky. It would be a great help. <laughs> <clears throat> Mm. It works well when it's overcast. Yeah. On a bright sunny day. In Brisbane for the past few days. days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a grey drone against a grey cloud. Yeah, it's just <laughs> a recipe for disaster. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've ordered um, my skin from uh, Decal Girl in, in America. It, was, it wasn't uh, only cheap as shit, they do great skins. So um, yeah. I'll show you my. Um, I've got a zoom near me. So that's my that's my zoom controller. Ooh. And then the actual skin, because they do the full skin. So sometimes you get the skin that's just on the top or the top and bottom. Whereas um, Dinko Girl give you the whole gummings with the legs and everything. Text mm -hmm. on So that's that's the uh right. Nice. Yeah, so it does the full 360 with the legs and everything. Well, so I'm cool. going, yeah, so I'm getting one of those, same same skin, uh, but for the mini, um, so that I can see the bloody thing when it's up in the sky. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. hearing you. <laughs> and the other good thing I've noticed is since I put this on there, none of the crows try and attack my drone. Mm. Oh, right. that's a, that's I think good. it's the yeah you know, the black and yellow danger or something because they they don't go anywhere near it. Yeah, tiger snake. <laughs> a flying <laughs> snake. Um, I think I think the grey mini just looked like a bird, <laughs> <It's just> a <laughs> seagull or something. Yeah, yeah. Have you guys had that issue with birds trying to attack the mini? Yeah, I've had a I had a minor. 
almost try to have a crack at it and sort of realised at the last minute that I probably shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I buzzed some plubbers yesterday, but they didn't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> Blew over the top of them and just looked at it and looked at me and put me what an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like the the first thing I noticed when I had the Spark actually, because I think I went from the Mavic Pro to the Spark, and I noticed a lot more birds were attracted to the Spark. They obviously weren't as intimidated by it. Um, yeah, I haven't seemed to have many issues with the Mini. Hey, it's kind of I don't know whether it's to do with the actual noise it produces whether that's got something to do with it or whether it's just its actual like size and presence in the air it's, it's odd i don't know is the mini noticeably quieter than the other ones yeah mm. yeah definitely yeah. it's quieter than the uh, nugget yeah and that's probably got to have something to do with it as well so with good. this whole yeah yeah no sorry continue I was just going to say about this whole like motor speed error because that's something that you know I experienced and I noticed in the group we experienced so I thought that'd be something to address now for anyone new into the group or anyone who's just updated their firmware um, I can't remember exactly what the error was I'm pretty sure it's just a motor speed error is that is that what other people experience as well with the new firmware update yeah I haven't had any yeah. problems with it at all oh, you yeah, haven't I mean. No, one. no problem. Okay, and you're both updated to the latest version. Yeah, yeah, one whatever it is, one zero zero five hundred or something. <laughs> yeah, so, um, zero, one zero, 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 zero. Talking of sparks and skins, this is what happens when you let your wife choose a skin. <laughs> oh God! She's <laughs> <laughs> worried about the birds, so it's got a set of googly eyes on it. Oh no way! <laughs> <laughs> I know a well weeded lake you can drop that in. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Nice. Yeah, I did say to her, when's the refresh finish on this thing? <laughs> mm. Oh no. <laughs> oh that's uh mate, that's too much. The googly eyes as well, I was not expecting that. That's great. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, so I guess for... to look like a like a bicycle helmet, stop magpie sweeping it. <laughs> yes, that would actually be amazing. <laughs> I think it was a ploy to stop me from flying it. Yeah, that's what it was. Does it work? Yeah, I, I, I won't send it. <laughs> yeah, Could no, be seen dead with it. Is that tonight's prize? Is it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Get your drone away, but we had loads of people. <laughs> um, yes, it is motor speed error. Yeah, it's one of the one of the guys Jay sense put up a video uh, a couple of days ago about it. Yeah, so he's actually got the error on screen. Yeah, that was it. Because I didn't realize um, until you guys actually helped me out with what it was, and then when I replaced the propeller. Um, and then watch that video a bit more. I noticed that the way that my propellers were sitting in the bag or in the case, it was actually bending it slightly. So now I'm like being really mindful to make sure that the propellers are, you know, horizontal as such, and they're tucked underneath that kind of like square, I guess, that's in there to hold it in place. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because it must be this new update. They like they must have made it extremely sensitive because the it was a slight. Like, it wasn't even noticeable. It didn't even look like it was bent at all. But uh, a lot of people obviously experience that error. So I guess like the recommendation is either don't update or just be careful when you put it in the case. <laughs> I looked at yeah, some well, of those um, plastic things to put the props in, like mm. for traveling, but they weren't available on eBay. Like they wouldn't were going, going to be sent till June or something like that, you know? Uh, it's a bit annoying because um, there wasn't an issue beforehand. Mm. Uh, it was, yeah, it's not like there was problems flying them with slightly bent propellers before. Now, since the update, it gives you a warning, and then you can't. Yeah, you know, people started panicking and not flying. Yeah. This this might seem like a silly question, but what sort of how many hours flying would you get out of the average prop per se? Mm. Good question. I know a that hard is, one, but there must be question. some rough figure. 
Well, when, I, when I, should you replace your props after 20 hours flying, 50, 100? How many trees have we hit in that time, Greg? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that, Crash that was, number four. <laughs> that would be mine is when, when I've broken them because the, the Mavic Pro has got about 1,000 hours on it and it's still on the original props. Well, okay, cool. Wow. So it's just a case of smashing it in the entry. Yeah. I think a big thing is to look at the actual prop and see the like integrity of it. So if there's like any form of chip on it, um, I would probably replace it. Like I noticed with some of my old props, um, and it wasn't even from because I've never crashed a drone, but like I noticed, I don't know what it was from, but there were little like chips along the actual Insects. propeller. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess like at that point it wasn't affecting the flight, but I decided to swap it over. But I probably could have got a lot more out of it. But I just noticed that there were, yeah, some structural kind of damage to the the prop itself. But yeah, it's yeah, a hard one to answer. Catches at the moment on uh, my props, but then that's from running into things while whilst learning. <laughs> yeah. The problem with the chips is that they can crack, and then you can lose half your prop, and then you've mm. got a problem. Yeah, then you're going to plummet out of the sky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Six mode is much better. <laughs> you can lose yeah. one. <laughs> That's a, with yeah, that with the two, I had um, I had a, a swarm of insects attracted to it. I could barely see it on the camera. But mm. when it come down, it was noticeable. It was splattered like the front windscreen of your car after a country drive. That put, I don't know what they were. They must have had, I don't know, shells or something. But they had... Um, that damaged the front of the props on the two, so I don't know if the minis would do the same. Yeah, true. Well, great holder. Yeah, that's really cool, Raymond. Where'd you, yeah, get, just ordered, where'd you get those? Ordered, oh, I haven't got them. I just stole them off another picture, but I've ordered some of those. They've had to come in from China. Mm. Okay. They're the ones that were going to take two or three months from what I saw. Because oh. mm. I've, I've only had my... Mavic for about three or four days and I updated it straight away and I've had no issues with that warning. I'm guessing mm. it is the motor more so because I don't even put mine in the case anymore. Mine sits on a shelf. Yeah. So there's no bending, no unfolding. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because I did read that a few people said you could go through the DJI Assistant app and like uh, downgrade it to the previous firmware and yeah, then that so issue just was not there at all. Are they spinning too fast or too slow? Mm. Or yeah, unbalanced, I don't actually say. possibly. I, I thought, thought it was something to do with the, the prop. Too flat or too... Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was just slightly bent down. Like That's all I could find. That the, They were actually like being damaged by being placed in the case and then the weight of the, the case sitting on it. But I don't know. It's hard to really say because obviously DJ have done it and then not really said anything about what's going on. Like, I don't know, have they even had a press release about it or mentioned anything? Because there's a lot of people reporting it. Oh, I've no. not seen anything. But the sticker in the bottom of the bag does actually state you fold the propellers across the body of the, the, the aircraft and then place it in mm -hmm. the box, and that seems to to uh, resolve it to a degree. I was yep. keeping them. I had them poking straight out and forward and backwards, and yeah, <laughs> probably wasn't real good for them. <laughs> yeah, but it seems that from what I've been seeing on um, on the other blogs and that is that they're saying that it's more about if you've got it in storage for a while and you're not flying it and it's sitting with the with the props bent up against those plastic uh, the uh, cushioning inside the Maverick case that mm -hmm. will distort your props and extreme heat. Mm. There was one guy yeah. saying, no direct sunlight. And I thought, well, you don't live in Queensland, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Try and avoid it. <laughs> yeah, good luck. I guess that's I another know. thing, isn't it? I don't like, know how uh, it would sense it either, because if you assume that your, whatever it hovers at would be a certain number of RPM, hmm. to get an overspeed or an underspeed, you'd imagine your RPM would be, have to be different. But if you put guards on there, well, it has to increase the RPM to carry the extra, you know, 100 grams of weight. So, mm. but it doesn't error when you do that. Mm. So I don't know how they measure it. Yeah. Oh, those prop guards are available in Sydney. <laughs> yeah. $7.95 yeah, $7 from Sydney. 
like a click and collect thing, or what are we talking? Yeah, they've got click and collect. Uh, but they've, only got them, they've only got them in red. Come mm. on, kids, share it in the chat. Give us a look. <laughs> What's this shit? Access denied. You don't have permission to access PayPal. What? <laughs> <laughs> Um, need the Google, uh, Google Google edition. Eva, Eva, <laughs> shut me out. I'll do that later. Uh, apparently, the, you can get, <laughs> you can get them from uh, New South Wales if you don't want to wait and then come in from China. There you go. You don't have to worry about any of that if you're buying your little dome display. Is that right, Dan? Mm, yeah. Well, that's exactly right. I'm just not going to fly it. I'm just going to leave it in that. Take it out to the field and just leave it in there. I won't fly. It <laughs> <laughs> I was actually meant to get that today, so I have no idea. DHL said, "Yep, it's coming today. Where do you want us to leave it?" And just have not seen it. So who knows? Maybe he Someone's was a Mavic Mini. Yeah, well, that's it. <laughs> I see what someone um, in the group posting about it. Oh, I'm going to know who's who's got it. <laughs> the um, fly more pack. The mains adapter that goes in the wall is about five mil too deep. No. I'm like, why would they do that? So you can't actually put it in the final case with the battery pack on the top of it because it sits right. It's yeah. a bit too high. I'm like, oh, okay. to the hell you guy? Yeah, come on, guys. Maybe we need to start our own drone brand. <laughs> Just call it DI. Is it I find there's enough room in my um, fly in my bag um, that I can put a battery bank on top of um, my batteries. My, mm. the, you know, the um, the the recharging battery thing. There's enough mm. room for me to put a battery bank on top of that. And all my cables mm. I put underneath that, in the screwdriver and stuff, and I hide my propellers in their box underneath the uh, control. And it all yeah, fits cool. fits well and sits. That's what I need to do. It's really not going to play good. <laughs> it's not showing. Put it like against your shirt, maybe. Uh, if I do. Oh, you got to turn yeah. it on. Oh, yeah. What, so, what, you got something underneath the charging station? Oh, yeah. So, where's your power pack? Uh, the um, mains adapter. In the yeah, backpack okay, that I put all of this in. <laughs> Ah, oh, right. Okay, yeah, that's where I'm trying to put mine is underneath the yeah, back, yeah that battery pack. So it's all yeah. in the back and it doesn't quite fit. It... No. Yeah, no, I hide everything else behind my, under my battery pack. <laughs> mm. It actually perfectly fits the Osmo Pocket on top of the battery pack. So you can have that on top right across and still close the case up, which I really? think is pretty cool. Yeah, it fits perfectly. Which I thought was quite cool. Um, well, should we move on to so the next question we were going to ask is about you know people who are starting out and it's their first flight. Um, so kind of like what what can you expect from your first flight, and maybe some tips that we have for people who are about to fly for the first time because I know how as I'm sure you all do how full on that first experience is how daunting it can be. So. I don't know. Can you guys remember your first flight? Yeah, make sure you update your firmware before you get there. It's a long walk home with a sad face. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> or somebody posted on the page the other day, don't forget to take your controller with you. <laughs> yes. uh, that's you why I have a bag. <laughs> One day out of quarantine, shot off with them and he got to where they were going and went, crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to struggle to fly without a controller. <laughs> well, they, they've just opened us up a bit up here in Queensland and we can go 50 k's as the bird flies from our homes. And that gets mm. me up to um, the Brisbane Forest Park and Mount Nebo and places like that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting up there and flying around and, and doing some interesting sights. Mm. There's all yeah. sorts of sights up in the forest park itself. Yeah. Mount Nebo is actually really nice to fly around because I live in Queensland as well. Right. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nebo is really nice. going to be awesome to fly off there. 
mm. that, uh, and it's full of history. And if you head off down England, down to follow England Creek along on its wind to Brisbane, the Brisbane River, um, that's uh, there's old logging tracks through there and old car uh, wagon wheels and stuff still laying in the scrub. That's cool. Yeah, no, it's a rich history of that place. That's mm. largely undisturbed. This is for you, Keith. I've just done it. <laughs> yeah, but right, you've got so much in there. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, no, lift the lid back up again. <laughs> See, that's not fitting snug. The, um, yeah, look, so you're wobbling it with your thumb. So that's what I'm saying. It's just a little bit too high. Ah, the bag shuts, the bag shuts. Yeah, no, we're just pressing down. <laughs> I'm not forcing it. I'm not forcing it. <laughs> There's no forcing going on. It's kind of impressive that you can fit that much in that little compartment. I, I love the um, argument when people are selling the Mavic 2 bags, this thing. Uh, they're, they're shit. shit, you can't get anything in them. I'm like, you are kidding, aren't you? The amount of stuff mm. I've got in this is unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon I've got about 40 items in there. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah seriously. Like, SD sure. cards don't count. Yeah. <laughs> I've, got, I've got about 10 things in there. Oh, damn. <laughs> but you'd be surprised what you can cram in a bag. Yeah. And they actually uh, increased the size of that bag from the, the Mavic Pro, and it's like a lot nicer now because previously with the Mavic Pro, it would fit and it was fine, but I noticed it was a little bit of a snug fit. But since the yeah. Mavic 2, they've made it like a not significantly bigger, but slightly bigger bag, and it fits a lot nicer. You've got a lot more room now. Well, one of the gripes is it only fits one battery. And like, right. you do realize there's two levels you can actually lift up and put. So, mm. I think it's air. Do you not use the little side, side nets, the side pouches? Yeah, yeah. I've got um, 20 uh, SD cards. Yeah, and I got my phone charger that side. I got the um, phone cradle that side. I got an anemometer on that side for the air. And then inside mm. the bag, I've got my, my drone. I've got a drone, my charger, and a um, controller, a, a battery, two batteries underneath, the multi uh, charging unit, all my cables in here, hard readers, and the uh, battery to um, USB for recharging phones and shit. And then in there, I've got all sorts of crap. And then in here, I've got leg extensions. I've got spot wipes. I've got three sets of um, propellers. I've got ND filters. <laughs> and just fire around. Uh, fill it up. You got, got so much in there. there. I've got some space there. I have to buy some. <laughs> Sneak a leather Mavic Mini in there. I'm sure you could fit the Mavic Mini in there as well. Probably could. In Tuck it in. Yeah, that'd actually be pretty cool. You might bend the props though. Be careful. Hello, Mac. Mac just joined us. Welcome. Hello. Howdy ho. But getting back to topic. <laughs> uh, what, yeah. was your, what, was, what was your question? Just like your first flight experience and you know some advice maybe for for beginners like what do we think is a smart way to start what was a safe place to fly when you do mine when was you... gone sorry mine was only about four or five weeks ago because i got it at easter and i was that terrified that it was literally a case of read through everything check everything power up everything do all of it before even taking off and then it was literally out in the driveway <laughs> take off, hover, do that for a minute or two, listen to all the commands that were coming through, land, then pack it away. And it's, I think more often than not, it's getting used to the unpacking and packing away. Because I noticed at one point I'd actually put the drone away in the case, thinking I'd turned it off, but I hadn't. Thankfully, I pulled it out about 10, 15 minutes later and it was bloody hot. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. just getting into that routine, and I, I understand why now people have the pre-flight checklist. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And I guess another big thing, like within what you're saying as well, is being mindful of the gimbal cover, because I'm sure people out there have left the gimbal cover on, and that's obviously not great for the gimbal or the camera. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a biggie. 
them together. And also making sure you're aware of which way your drone is pointing. So yeah. when you go forward on throttle, it doesn't come slamming straight back at you because it's actually pointing the other way, <coughs> which I found out. Um, Did you? Luckily, the hard way? Luckily, luckily, the sensors detected me and stopped it from flying straight into me. So I'm like, you fucking idiot. So yeah. I was supposed to get that. Wasn't paying One attention. thing I noticed was it takes forever to get a GPS lock, the Mini, mm -hmm. compared to the 2s or... Yeah. Or even the yep. original Pro, it takes so much longer, and I find myself taking off in Addy mode, and mm. that's not necessarily a problem for myself, but it might be a problem. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah what I do is I put my drone down, turn the drone on, and then I go back and set up my phone. So I put my cradle in, put my phone in, get the connection going, turn the controller on, bring up the app, and then I'm ready to go. And so because of that reason, and because uh, by the time it takes you to just get your controller up and running and stuff, it's got your GPS locks. Because I used to, because with my Mavic, I do it the other way, which is I get my controller up and going, and I go and turn the drone on, and you get that quick start. But yeah, with that mini, mm -hmm. with that lag, if you put your uh, mini up first and then get yourself organized on your phone, you're good to go normally straight away. Mm. Yeah, that's it. There's, I, I um, find uh, an important one is, um, and it was a blue eye made. I had it at, at roughly about head height ho hovering and uh, took my eye off the drone and looked down at my screen and then manoeuvred the drone and it whizzed past my head about a foot away. <laughs> 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 and I went, oh, shit. <laughs> Keep eye on drone. Don't touch paddles unless you're looking at the damn thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that noise? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it cuts me at all. <laughs> yeah, far out. Lucky, yeah, you know, so look at the damn thing if you're going to touch those pedals. Make sure you're looking yeah. at it. <laughs> yeah. I did see well, someone I, in the group recommend um, actually not connecting your phone for your first couple of flights so you're not getting distracted by the camera feed. Yeah. Like just uh, using the control. I can't, did you say that, Keith, or did someone say that in the group? I can't no, remember. Someone said in the group, which I thought was a yeah. really good idea. <laughs> Yeah, because that's, that's you know so distracting looking at the the screen you're trying to get the right shot as well as figure out where, how to fly and what all these different beeps mean and all the different things on the interface so i guess that takes away a major distraction so i thought that was actually a really good piece of advice i i would probably go through a couple of batteries um before i even take a photo um even on the new drone so when i got the mini go i've been flying DJI for four years, five years now. And um, so, yeah, as I said, I think this is I don't know, sixth drone or whatever. Um, but even so, as soon as I got the mini, and um, wasn't even worried about taking photos. It's just trying to get a feel of how it handles. And um, you were talking the other day about that slight lag on the mm. controls, so just getting used to where those sort of lags are. Um, also, that stopping distance. So when you take your, your um, fingers off your controllers, does, does it, or does it, yeah, because mm. that can make a big difference in terms yep. of how long it takes to stop. Yeah, so just, just yeah, getting used to how long does it take to get up, how long does it take to get down, you know, if you fly out this so far, how long does it take to get back again, how much battery did you have left, that sort of stuff before you start worrying about taking photos and videos. Mm. Yeah, exactly right. And I think uh, we spoke about it last night, Keith, but the whole idea of just getting used to the different modes as well, which kind of, you know, perfectly aligns with what you said, because with sports mode, for example, that reacts completely differently to, you know, the other modes. So if you had no idea how that was to react and you were, you know, 500 meters away, or whatever you are, and then you need to figure out how to get back, like that's, you know, something you do not want to deal with in the moment when you're stressed. So that's something to maybe go into an open yeah. field or someone quite safe and then learn all the different modes, learn the different interface. Another thing that's really important as well, I think, which um, I had a lot of issues with the, the Mavic Air when I started doing video content on that, a lot of people were complaining about just the interference and they were having issues with uh, the Wi-Fi connection. Um, but through the actual settings, and you can do this with the Mavic Mini, you can actually, um, as your drone is sitting on the ground before you take off, you can actually see the interference in, in the different channels. So you can choose a channel that has the least interference, therefore giving oh. you more range and a more reliable flight. So I found that really helpful to get used to that before you start flying. 
Thank you. That's interesting. I didn't even know you could do that. I just hit automatic. <laughs> mm, mm. And I was the same, hey. And it was actually after people started commenting, saying, you know, um, and this was with the Mavic Air as well. They were saying, I can't even get past 200 meters without it completely cutting and losing all my video transmission. Yeah. So then I started looking into it more and, you know, saw a few videos and people were actually explaining how you have full control over that. You can't do it while you're midair. So you have to land and then you have the option to do it. Um, okay. But I find that really important to do, especially in like areas where there are a lot of Wi-Fi signals because you can choose something that's going to be a lot more reliable. Mm. Are you guys oh, all in built-up areas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially yeah. Roads. <laughs> Main roads. <laughs> mm. I was going to say the one thing, you know, having a lot of open space is good for learning. Like I don't actually look too much at the drone. I look more at my screen. And I just make sure I got that height over over the trees, but I guess I'm lucky I've got plenty of space. Mm, mm. Is it my imagination, or do a lot more people fly these things inside just because of their small size? <laughs> That's because we can't go out. There's a virus. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it's good for terrorising the granddaughter and the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think so. It makes more sense, hey? or at least like flying through tighter gaps. I think that's what made the Mavic Mini so appealing to me. The fact that you can get these super unique shots through, you know, through trees and different tight gaps where I probably wouldn't do that with a bigger drone. No, and, and evidently we're saved from a lot of annoying beeping. If you've got those sensors, they tend to be very <laughs> sensitive and make a lot of noise. And I was thinking, God, that'd drive you around the bend trying to fly through some trees and this thing going beep, 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 beep. Yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing I, um, else in that. <laughs> I was at St. Ives, um, the medieval festival, a couple of years, when, whenever the Mavic 2 came out. And I'd only had the Pro for about two days, I think it was. Um, and a friend of mine's got a full-size trebuchet, and um, one of those that fires off the, uh, with a sort of, rope sling on it and fires watermelons about 100 meters across um, the oval and I thought I'm going to film this so I thought I'm going to come up behind it and then um, sort of come over the top as they're launching and then I'm going to follow the melon all the way so I'm on the controller and I set the drone up and they're all preparing to fire and I'm hovering behind it I see the arm go and I flew forward and then my sense has gone off I could hear beep 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 the controller and I've looked down and the fucking arm has come back like this, and woof. And on the video, you can see the arm of this thing come straight back up on the front of the road. I missed it by about eight inches. <laughs> that would be the shortest flight in history. And um, yeah. what happened was when the when the trebuchet arm had come up, the sensor had gone off, and the drone just stopped. So instead of carrying on flying, as soon as the sensors are gone, so the thing is just sat there waiting for the arm to come back again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. If I find the video... I've seen the refresh back. claim on that, hit by trebuchet. <laughs> yeah, right, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, yeah. sure, yeah. <laughs> Send it back in a box of bits and you're covered in watermelon. There you go. It's going well, to be the DJI was. Christmas film clip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I always get nervous now when I hear the beep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. That's insane, man. I, I think that's the, one of the ways I've been learning is watching hell of a lot of videos. And, you know, especially things like 10 stupid ways to crash your drone and, yeah. uh, and other great titles like that. I found them absolutely enlightening. You know, mm. um, you know losing your drone from flyaway. You know, and what yeah. you should do in my second day of flying. I, I went up to about 90 metres and uh, next moment I've got a red thing saying, hi, wind warning, plane can't come home. Talk about heart failure, but I'd watched a video that said that, you know, reduce your altitude. I didn't have time for reading the warning, <laughs> which actually gives you that advice. And, uh, and immediately reduced, reduced altitude and, of course, the thing came home. But, you know, it's just heart-rendering moment. It's, uh, they, mm. do, uh, they do well against the wind, but, yeah, the wind does knock them eventually yeah. <laughs> and it's terrifying yeah, the idea of losing it fly, watch mm. it fly away i'd rather land it or crash it <laughs> yeah it's not so far to walk mm. so the first thing i do with those um severe wind warnings and we get a few up here because we get pretty windy is turn the drone to the wind so yep. don't turn the drone away from the wind because then you've got a tailwind it's going to push the drone away 
um, and don't go side on to the wind because then you're running a flip. So it's, it's a bit like, you know, turn it so the wind's coming straight on and then drop your own down. And then once you get below the dusting, you can normally fly back okay. But yeah, a lot of the problem is if you don't know which direction the wind's coming from, it can ca cause all sorts of issues. Mm. Oh, no, interesting. Yeah, yeah well, I've been something... just learning. Sorry. No, you go. Um, I've just been learning using that UAV um, weather uh, app, and it gives you your um, wind profile. And uh, and I mean, it was telling me here in Brisbane, we've had lots of wind lately and it's going, oh, you can't fly, you can't fly. And then I looked at the wind profile and said, well, you know, it's mild winds that the Maverick could handle up to 100 metres. And I'm like, oh, shit, I can't fly. I, I live near Archfield Airdrome. So, I mean, when I'm flying, most times I can only go to 90 metres anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's um, made a difference in how that the settings in that program at first had me not flying at all. <laughs> Every single day going, no, you can't fly. But then mm. I found out I temperature set at 32 degrees as the minimum temperature. Oh. <laughs> and so every day was non-flying day. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Queensland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. I don't, I don't want to fly my plane under 32 degrees. <laughs> I, no. I, use, I use one of these um, because... Mm. All of the apps uh, and weather um, stations that give me my wind um, yep. are 35 k away from here, um, so they're not in your local spot. Um, and I live in a valley, and we, it's like a bloody wind tunnel. And so I always use one of these because it tells me tells me what the wind speed is. More importantly, it tells me where the gusting is. So it might be 20 k winds, but when it you know, hold up and you get a gust comes through to 30 k, and you're like, okay, that's a bit different. Um, yeah. So I found that this is really handy to have if you're not sure what the wind is and um, all the apps telling you it's 20, you go, that's fucking not 20. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm hearing it. No, that, that, that sounds like sound advice. Mm. I think that cost 10 bucks on eBay. Yeah, yep. no, it wasn't expensive. You might get it by 2021 with what's going on. but oh, It cost you 50 yeah. bucks if you buy it from Sydney. <laughs> yeah. Although I... Although I just paid seven dollars ninety five for whatever it was, that's a bargain. <laughs> so I having, I, I've got it to work on the other computer. They've mm. never forgiven us for winning the footy, have they? <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, Johnny. And while, whilst we're talking about wind, the other thing is um, to remember if you're flying in wind, um, if you're flying with the wind behind you, and you use up half your battery you ain't going to be able to get it back again. Um, so it's un understanding again where that wind is. And if you've got a 40K tailwind behind you and your drone's coming back at 35K an hour, then you're going to have a real problem getting that drone <laughs> back again. Um, yeah. So always be aware of, one, the direction of the wind and also that speed and try and factor that in to your batteries, uh, your battery life and your distance. Because uh, there's, yeah, there's no point flying out you know, 4k or whatever and people have been trying to see how much range they can get on there and then you know there's starting to be a few people saying that they've ditched their um, drones in the ocean or the whatever because they haven't made it back and that's probably because of wind mm -hmm. yep yep yeah i've that's seen a, a few videos on that sorry mm -hmm. now i've just noticed you know from the drones i've flown as well like when i took the mavic mini out and knowing that it was a dji drone uh, my, my first flight, I took it out and it was relatively windy and it was a little bit of an oversight in, in my mind because I just, I just thought, you know, it's a DJI drone. I've flown it a little bit and it seemed to handle fine. I did all my checks and everything, but that same, um, yeah, same situation happened where I actually was trying to fly against the wind on the way back and it was really struggling. And then I put it into sports mode and it was still, you know, like pushing it to get it back. So it wasn't like a close call, but it was pretty terrifying to say the least. So I think, you know, that's really important to recognize, like you said, where the wind's actually going and recognizing how your mini's going to handle in sports mode as well in case you need to come back. Yeah. I think that's and really I, mean, that's... I just need to charge my Mac. Give me a sec. If, if, you, if you go that the average battery uh, is going to give me 30 minutes, which it won't, I think, um, 
general consensus <coughs> 24 minutes, you know, 22, 24 minutes. Um, so if you go, well, you know, spec is 30 minutes. So I can fly 15 minutes one way and 15 minutes back the other way. You're probably going to lose your drone if you do that. Um, so, you know, I mean, I always go um, about two thirds. So if it's 30 minutes uh, published time, I reckon that's about 20. So I'll go 10 minutes in one direction. Um, and that gives me 10 minutes to get back. And if it's slow because there's a wind, I'm still probably just going to get back in time. But the uh, don't half publish time and think you, that, that's good for um, distance or you know, your battery life. Well, the I mean, other Cass huh? uh, um, stipulates that um, uh, petrol or, you know, um, fueled engines are required to have um, twice as much fuel as they need to make their destinations uh, as yeah. a safety measure for winds, um, incidences, not being able to land, etc. So yeah, it's a standard thing. So I, I saw um, one guy, or a lot of them actually, the Americans saying that if you set your battery thing to 60%, and that way, if your battery alarm goes off at that point, you turn around and you come home, and it gives you just that little bit of buffer, that 10% buffer. Um, in case of difficulty coming home. But even those guys, I've seen some clips where they've come real close to having to swim for their, their bird. Uh, it, does, it does depend on what you're doing. I mean, if you're, if you're going for a distance, um, then yeah, definitely, I would, I would go two thirds. Um, so 10 minutes out, 10 minutes back. Uh, but if yeah. you're just hovering around taking photos, I mean, you can go 20% before you get your know, alarm go off. I and mean, that's fine, because it's just up here. So you know it's gonna, yeah. You know, you know you're gonna land it in a minute or two minutes because it's yeah, 50, 80, 100 meters above your head. So that's not so much of a problem. And if it's mm -hmm. directly above you, you don't even need to worry about your battery. You just gotta be a good catch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just have a net with you. Yeah. <laughs> I did see a YouTube video ages ago with the Mavic One. I think where they took it up to ten thousand feet or something. Um, which was yeah, which was quite interesting, and it basically coasted all the way down. So they shut the battery off until about the last hundred meters, and then turned it back on again uh, and landed it with wow. zero percent battery or some shit. Some Chinese dude. That's um, insane. They'd, yeah, they would hacked the software. Yeah, and, uh, I you wonder how many they crashed before they got that footage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not game enough to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, another thing that I think, because um, I don't really use the return to home feature too much, but I know a lot of people seem to use that. Like it's, it's quite common, you know, even for, for beginners, like the advice that's out there is just to rely on the return to home. But one thing I've noticed is that at the default height of return to home is actually not enough. So one thing I recommend is going into the settings as well and actually changing the height of return to home to like 60 or 80 meters. Because otherwise, you know, if it's 30, 40 meters return to home and it's going to automatically do it, especially with the Mavic Mini, it doesn't have any sensors. So it's just going to hit a tree or a building or whatever. So yeah. I've actually had um, a mutual friend of like one of my friends. He actually had an issue where he lost his, his Phantom because it was gone into return to home and then it actually hit a tree on the way back. And uh, we lost the feed. We searched for it for hours and could not find it at all. So... Yeah, if you had it a little bit higher, it probably would have gone just over the tree line and everything would have been fine. But obviously the default just isn't high enough. My, my tips on return to home is um, as part of your pre-flight, set your home point. And um, the number of people that forget to set the home point. So yeah, two weeks ago, not two weeks ago, because we were in lockdown. Um, so eight weeks ago, um, I was flying 20k away and set the home point and today I forgot so my home point is 20k that way and I'll shit and run out of battery I hit return to home and my drone's fucking off <laughs> oh shit <laughs> I've never even crossed my mind that's frightening <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, always make sure you update your home point so if you do yeah, return yeah. to home you know where you're and, and yeah. the, other, the other advice I'll give is is don't use return to home and use the map. And so in yep. the bottom corner, um, there's a map that has your route to exactly where you've been. And what I do is I just turn it around and follow that line all the way back home again. And mm. so you could return to home, but if you've got plenty of battery, I would actually go to the map and retrace 
um, the line back to you because it's really good for you to be able to control the drone and get it back to you um, without having to rely on the return to home. So if there is a problem with the return to home, you go, shit, now how do I get home? Um, so the way to do that is to bring that map up and just follow your steps all the way back to you. Um, and I did that when I was in Hawaii. Um, I didn't use a return to home at all. I just used the map and just kept using the maps just to, um, so it becomes instinctive. And so rather than hitting the return to home, you know you can manually bring yourself home because there's nothing worse than going, I don't know where the drone is, how the hell is it going to come back now? And um, so for flyaways, it's perfect because if it pisses off, you just take your fingers off your controller and it'll stop and you just turn it around and follow you back. On that, do I found with the other drones that map comes up automatically with the mini you need to press. I got an iPhone that I run the mini with, and so I need to press in the corner to get the map to come up. Yeah, correct. If, I, if, I've, if I've gone for a bit of a fly and I press that button, it doesn't actually show me where I've been because it's like when it's not a small map, when it's even smaller, like just the icon, it doesn't track you on the screen. And so you need to press that when you, when you first take off. Is there any way, does anyone know that you can make that sit up like the, like the pros do or the, or the twos do? There, there must be a setting because mine does. Mine sits on the screen the whole time, a bit like histogram. Mine, mine just comes up like a little round icon. No, no. And, no, mine, and mine comes if, up I've, if I've flown for a hundred meters and I press the button, it shows where my drone is on the map but it doesn't show the blue line. But then if I start flying around, it shows the blue line. Right. And that's yeah. still in camera mode with the little square down the bottom left-hand corner. Yeah. But when I, I start, I've, I've got an, an Android and it's the same. It's got the map in the corner, but it tracks me. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Mine sits in the corner and tracks. So maybe it's an iPhone thing. Mm. Mine's Android as well. Yeah, I wonder why. Or, or like, also, what version are you on? Have you updated to the latest? Yeah, I'm on the latest. Yeah. I'll go grab it now and see if I can get it to do it. Yeah, that's odd, hmm. yeah, so, yeah, also, I did mention that we'd be doing a giveaway as well through this uh, live event. So, for the first giveaway I decided to give away like two clothing items from uh, the, the drone clothing store that I started maybe what a year and a half ago now called Iron the Sky Clothing um, so just for like our initial one I was thinking I could just give away two items um, to, to basically two people who um, are, are chosen from the competition so basically what will happen is this video will go up onto YouTube and then the question is, what got you into droning? So we'd love to hear like a little bit of a, a short snippet or a story as to what got you into droning. Um, and then we'll, we'll choose two winners from that as such to, to win two items, whatever they want, a hat, you know, a hoodie, singlet, whatever it is. Um, and then from there, we were talking about, you know, for future events, having, you know, accessories, Mavic Mini accessories or other products that we can give away as an additional kind of value proposition for people. Um, but yeah, so it will be, the entry will be through the YouTube video, so it won't be now. So then other people have an opportunity if they miss the event to then just comment on the video as such. But yeah, I thought I'd mention that before I forgot. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it'd be interesting actually for every to everyone's different reasons for uh, for getting into it. Mm. Well, we can share a bit now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, well, for me, I'm I, I'm a, um, a historian and uh, uh, mainly in Indigenous cultures, and uh, and in Brisbane, you know, historian of, of about Brisbane itself, and it has some fantastic sites, you know, World War Two sites, um, Indigenous sites that are in some extremely difficult terrain, and the idea of being able to buzz over with a uh, with the Mavic and have a peep see before going there. Um, it saves me a lot of effort <laughs> and that's yeah, nice. ultimately my aim is I can pop in and see things that normally would be almost impossible for me to get to. Mm. And, uh, and that's my idea of the drone. So I got the Mavic because I thought, Oh, I want the air too. And then I thought, but if I crash it, I'll cry. 
so I, I went with the Mavic Mini with much, you know, or oh, 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 I really want the two. And yeah. I went, no, 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 be sensible. Get the Mavic Mini and let's see if you can actually fly the bloody thing before you buy something expensive. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Because crashing the Mavic Mini would be like still probably a solo tier or maybe oh, few, a few tiers. Well, but it, it, it wouldn't be boring. His name's Gertrude now, so it'd be a family loss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So how, how were you actually introduced to the drones, though? Like, did you hear about them before that when you were thinking about um, them? Yeah, yeah, just seeing various things. And um, and I'm an interstate truckie, and, uh, and on the truck page, there's a few drivers that have got drones and some fantastic shots of B-doubles out on the, uh, the Nullarbor planes and places like that. And, um, and, you know, I travel all up and down the eastern seaboard of the country. We go to some absolute gorgeous country at times. Just in the last floods, I was up uh, up on the old horror stretch, the inland highway, out past Mackay there, in the back, in the boondocks between Rocky and Mackay. And uh, free floodwaters, it would have been so awesome to have a Mavic up there filming my truck beating its way through the floodwaters. It would have been awesome footage. <laughs> And it's all green out there. It's a desert normally, but it's beautiful and green and full of water. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh, and I'd been out there um, earlier in the year, and it was there was not a blade of grass to be seen. And I went out there that trip, and you know, there's four foot tall grass as far as the eye can see. Would have made mm. impressive footage from uh, before and after footage. Would have been awesome. Yeah. And that's you know another thing I like doing is yeah, seeing places I normally don't get to see. <laughs> mm. well that's it that's the thing that's so interesting about having a drone like you know you can take off from the most mundane looking spot but then when you actually get up in the air you have no idea it's like a play field you know like a playground yeah. you can fly around and you find the most interesting things yep yep but i mean a, a, a two would obviously be a better thing with that um you know the ability to put um, checkpoints along on a map and have your drone fly it while you're busily studying the ground can't mm. quite do that with the Mavic. I did it this morning up and down Forest Lake, but uh, that was, you know, I knew there was no obstacle, so I was able to just guide it by watching the map and, and moving it myself. And mm. uh, it was an awesome experience, but some great footage of weed. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, but um, yeah, it's, it, you know, if, if, what is it, P, FPV or whatever it is, first person yeah. vision. That looks damn interesting, but I think I might get giddy. <laughs> mm. It would yeah. be uh, an out-of-body experience almost. Mm. Yeah, definitely. It's a whole nother experience, the whole FPV space. Like the next event that we are going to host on here, we'll, we'll actually have a FPV pilot come yeah. on and, and show everyone, you know, how he does his builds, how he troubleshoots, um, you know, how you actually fly the thing and basically just give us a breakdown on that because it really is a fascinating space but like it's an it's another level above a drone that just hovers you know like yeah, drones yeah. Just sit there. yeah but whole nother world i watched some guy who hit, amped one up last night to 50 watts or volts or whatever it was running through his motors and it sounded like a, a jetliner taking off <laughs> but it mm. flew like a demon <laughs> mm. with um five inch props on it and she just hammered through the air it mm. was a, an impressive piece of building <laughs> Yeah. So, Tim, have you been able to replicate that issue? Yes. Hold on, let me turn this back. Yeah. <laughs> this background off because that doesn't help anyone or anything. Hmm, where it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. That's the way it starts. Yeah. And so if I press on that, I get oh, the, okay. standard, the standard yeah. map. But yeah, awesome. in that, in that, first mode it it won't actually draw a blue line i've got to press it to bring that box up to get that blue line to come up yeah cool on, on the android you, the, you get it in that second view um all the time you don't get the first view mm. um yeah i don't i don't know if it's a setting i haven't been able to find out how i can adjust it that's interesting well i have an iphone as well so i might test it now because i think mine does the same i think mine stays in that mode as well i'll just quickly grab it have a look i 
I have to check it now just to make sure I'm not full of shit. <laughs> I've got to be second guessing myself now. I'm like, damn. Right after your googly eyes, I'm I'm not prepared to believe anything you say anymore. <laughs> it is on my googly eyes. <laughs> I think mine does the same thing. It might be an iPhone thing. And these things drive me mad because I don't have to take them off on my on my Zoom. Mm. <laughs> I'm always worried about dropping it. Hey? I actually use my Zoom ones on the mini. Do you I really? Find that, yeah, I just feel they feel nice in the hand. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, shit. So They try to boot it up. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I just got to press a button, but yeah, that's I'm just it, used but... to it booting up on like on the DJI Fly Four app, whatever it's mm. called, Go Four or whatever it's called. It comes up automatically. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just curious as well because I think okay. I have the exact same thing. And in that case, it's probably just an iPhone thing. I think, I think it's good that the um, joysticks uh, come off of these controllers. Oh, yeah. I can't inadvertently now launch it into my ceiling. Yep, so mine's got the same, uh, same thing. So it starts out like that as well. Yep, exactly the same little, little icon. Yep, okay. And I've always wondered, like, if I don't press it, because a lot of the time I don't press it up to bring the map, and I lost my drone, would it still be coming up, like, on the, you know, could I still use the Find My Drone? Is it still tracking it, is what I'm asking mm -hmm. to do, I guess. It should. I don't, I don't see why not. Yeah. yeah. It just might take a bit Good. Uh, that's the that Android. I just boot straight into it. Yeah. That's Android. Yeah. Yeah, if it didn't still track it, that would be a massive oversight by DJI. Like, you'd probably be able to sue them over that. That would be really unfair if that was the case. Take off with caution. Yeah. <laughs> just just hand launch it there, Keith. Why not? I've got to put my um, cupcake coolers on. Cupcake coolers? <laughs> what, what's that? The cage. <laughs> the cage. Oh, right. Yeah, oh, you said that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually really, uh, they're quite dangerous to use outside, actually, because if any sort of wind catches them, the mini really struggles. So uh, I learned that the hard way. Because the mini is such, like, it's an amazing piece of technology, but it's so light as well. Like, you've got to be really mindful that it is, you know, even though it's a DJI drone, it's still, like, you know, the smallest drone pretty much that DJI have released. Weighs nothing. Wind really does affect it a little bit. Those the the guards on this thing, it um it was just I mean the thing looks like the Starship Enterprise enough. But you put these things on and all I see is the Starship Enterprise. And I went, I'm not flying <laughs> the Starship Enterprise around. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> Really, whoever designed it has got to be a Trekkie, writ large. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Look at that fucking wobble. Oh. What have you got in there? It's that thing. It's I told you we've had this conversation. It's the brick. It's five mil. <laughs> <laughs> Still trying to get that damn thing in. <laughs> mm. Five mil, too big. Send DJ an email, mate. Get this thing sorted. <laughs> A pocket on the side of the next bag, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice for the cable. Swap it with the iPhone ones. They're nice and skinny. Yeah, mm. yeah that's it. Oh, is anybody using filters? I've got mm. on I'm waiting on mine to arrive. This covert's delayed them. Yeah, mm. I've got, the, I got the, the clip on one. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's actually a clip on um, because okay. the stick on ones, mine fell off at about 100 metres. Mm, I, landed, I, I landed and had no filter. Like, well, it like, just uh, fell off. Yeah, they just the tacky stick. Yeah, which I'm a bit sus about. 
having something that sticks because it, especially with the Australian climate, it gets a bit warm. And yeah, the adhesive's hard. gone, yeah. yeah so. That's what made me choose the clip on as well. Yeah. I, I got mm. the clip. And it's made a difference, has it? Yeah, you're great. Love it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I've, actually, that's actually what's going to be the next question about like recommended apps and, and accessories. So do you actually think it's worth getting in a pack of ND filters? Well, I do because mine's a polarizer because I do a lot of stuff over water. Um, but also if if I chip it, I just get another one where they don't, yeah. want, to chip, <laughs> they don't want to chip the lens. Um, and I chip a lot of lens. I, I chip a lot of these because I said I'd take off in sand. And um, so, yeah, insects, anything. And, and those little chips that you get on your um, rotors, on your props, and you've got the same stuff hitting the front of your lens. So, you know, just to have something on there, just to give it your lens a bit of protection is, is worth doing. Um, but I do find it's good for the video to have that ND filter on a sunny day. Mm. And definitely the water photos with the polarizing filter on there make a difference. Yeah. That's a good point, though, about actually protecting the lens because that, you know, is one of those things that would take a while to get repaired as well, especially in the old COVID not, times. And they're not cheap to get a, mm. a new lens on the front of a gimbal once it's out of warranty. Yeah. Um, so what, what else on the accessories? Um, well, definitely with the fly more to get the additional batteries. That's always a win. Um, yeah, for me, I don't actually have really any accessories. I've, I've gone through all the landing pads and landing legs and, you know, I've even got like a, a temp gun to check the temperature of the motors as well. But for the most okay. part, it's, yeah, it's like overkill. I, you know, don't really need it nowadays. So I find myself hand launching the, the Mavic and, uh, yeah, I don't really seem to, yeah, use many accessories when it comes to apps. Like I use the, uh, open sky app which I find to be really good. Uh, I also, I forgot to mention it in the post. I don't check it as much anymore. Do I have it? The like magnetology, I don't even have it anymore, but there was an app that would check if there are any like solar flares basically, because a solar flare can occur at any, you know, throughout the year and then actually basically destroy your drone or it can like just fall out of the sky. So that was something I used to check quite regularly when I went and did this drone course that was yeah, this whole thing that was offered to me as an opportunity to go and do a, a drone course and to learn a little bit more about the Mavic. They taught us a lot about that. Um, but yeah, I find myself just using Open Sky now for apps and I don't really use accessories. What about you guys? Do you guys have any apps or accessories that you, that you use? Just, just the basic ones, UBA Weather and um, Open Sky. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's about it really. So far. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. Oh, what's that? Um, my phone or iPad slips into there. Ah, oh, yep. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, you got the same, Jacob? Yeah. Oh, it's a bit different. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they're really good for having that just bring your phone down. Um, so, yeah, that's my sort of go to accessory. And then you can also leave your case on as well, right? You yeah, leave your phone case on, which is yeah. like the most annoying thing about the controller. <laughs> you have to take the case off. Yeah. And they're flat pack, so they're quite cool. Hmm. Apart from the filters, what I've ordered, that's the only accessories I'll bought. Bought a few spare props. I was um, hmm. probably around Australia Day. I do a lot of flying over water as well. And I've found it's quite stable over water. And I've actually got down to about half a metre to get the good shots. And it, it was rock solid. And yeah. then this day, I was probably two and a half metres up, looking through some trees. It was a nice shot. And it just started drifting around and sinking. And mm -hmm. then I took it out probably a week later. Same problems again, not over water. And recalibrated everything, still had the same problems. Flipped off the props, new ones on, gone. So I end up buying about four sets of props, and I've just gone. Well, they're so flimsy. Over time, they're, they're going to just flex, and I've mm. just gone. They're, they're just a consumable now. Mm. So if I notice any drift or anything, and everything seems good, 
I'm um, just going to start flipping props out. Yeah, right. When, when it was um, dipping on the water, was the water really still? No. Okay. Because I know that the bottom sensors um, can struggle with the reflective surface of the water. It doesn't know where the ground is. And so it confuses the sensors, confuse the drone as to the height. So that's why you get that sort of dropping. Um, well, I, um, I read about that as well. So that's why I took it out a week later over land to see what it would do. Mm. And yeah, done exactly the same thing. So and it dropped. Dropped, dropped from about 50 metres up. And I thought this thing's hitting. And then it got to probably two foot off the ground and just caught itself. Really? Um, well, it just like, started coming down. Just sunk. And I'm flying it back. So I'm pushing it. Have you ever seen that video where the guy flies it for about four or five Ks? And he's just pushing it back on a flat battery. And it's dropping at the same time. Some YouTube dude in the UK. Yep. I'm pushing it back. And it's just grabbed itself. And I've hmm. landed and then flipped out the props and haven't had a problem since. They, they do seem to have an amazing ability to recover themselves. I um, was doing some low flying amongst some trees and being an idiot and uh, <laughs> flew into what looked like a grass stalk. And I thought, oh, yeah, that's not going to drop her. And uh, it hit her and she went straight to the ground and she caught herself, I kid you not, with, in, with inches to spare. I posted it mm. on the page. And uh, you see the... The footage. I mean, the the bitchman screams up to the to the the gimbal, and my heart's in my mouth. And then the plane just recovered, and you know, oh, that was the one. Was that yeah, the yeah. one from a couple of days ago? Yeah, yeah, the idiot that flew into the grass. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that was you, wasn't it? That yeah. was me. <laughs> was that your first hour of flight? Uh, yeah, yeah, I had just got my first hour up and uh, got a bit cocky thinking, oh, I can fly through the trees. <laughs> yeah. I'm also that. learning about the physics involved. Like, if they skid in the air, you know, you whip the drone around, oh, yeah. you fly back on itself, and it, it slides back a couple of feet before we, she'll kick in and, mm. and, uh, and go forward again. Just in the slide, I'm, I'm enjoying that bit, bit of boy racing, I suppose. <laughs> But mm. I'm amazed at the flex in the in the um, uh, those propellers are undergoing. Like when you go into braking, you you whip it towards yourself at speed and and take your hands off, and she just backs up and shit. There must be some force going through those props. Mm. They must be flexing something chronic. Yeah, I like that sunshade, Jacob. Yeah, does that work uh, well or what? That's really uh, cool. It's pretty good. Um, I've got one it's kind of had, which is much better. Just because it's a bigger screen. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, like that. That's it's, really cool. Uh, so, how does it actually mount? Okay, how how do you then mount that to the controller? Um, it it slips in. So the phone's like just sticking out here a little bit, so I can still slip in those those grooves in the controller, or you can mount it to like one of these things, and it just sticks in oh yeah like that okay that works that would be really handy yeah especially if your phone's for... shot like not a good screen mm. like yeah that would make a world of difference yeah 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 that's it because the older iphone or the older screens in general really struggle in direct sunlight hey yeah <laughs> yeah they can I've, I've spent a lot of time on my hand over the top of the phone. And so yeah. <laughs> or you yeah. turn to try to like get a bit of shade over it. You're like yeah. trying to see it. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of those ones. Yeah. <laughs> it's very certainly you, you and flying. That was quite funny the other day. Mm. A guy was sitting in his ute. He had a, a cab uh, on the back of his ute. He's got the tray down and he's sitting inside the cab. Flying, wondering why his signal was bad. <laughs> you possibly get more metal around you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and yeah, oh, that's a uh, whole conversation about the use of the aerials. And we were talking about the other night about how to use the actual aerials on a controller. Um, so I don't know if you uh, realise that you can move. Yeah, you can move them. 
uh, as you're flying in this final controller. Um, mm. yeah. A handy tip, um, the two handy tips for um, getting range uh, on your controller is um, to move your controller sticks, depending on where your aircraft is, and actually to face your controller to the aircraft. So a lot, a lot of uh, mistakes that people make is the, the drones over there and they're pointing here. So you've got this really thin edge pointing towards your drone. So you really want to turn your controller so your thick, thick blades are pointing towards your drone. So where you can see this is problematic is I've got my controller vertical and the drone is very high up above me. So literally you've got these points of the antenna are pointed to your drone. So what you should do when the drone's flying high is just to bring, uh, drop those down. So then you've got those flat edges of pushing that signal high. And then as your drone goes past you, then it's sort of low in front, you raise them back up again. So again, you've got the two, because if you're sitting down like that and your drone's in front of you, you've got bugger all in terms of antenna pointing towards your drone. So the idea is that you actually move these, this is why they have the different settings on them. Um, so you actually move them depending on where your drone is uh, mm. in, uh, relative to yourself. And then you always try and keep that flat blade yeah, pointing to your drone. And you'll probably find a lot of your connection issues um, yeah, disappear and the amount of range that you get increases just by using your um, antennas more effectively. Yeah. That's a handy hint on the, the controller. Mm. Yeah, definitely, especially with the Mavic Mini where it's relying on Wi-Fi as well. You want as much signal getting sent to your drone as you can. I, I see people going, you know, jumping on an eBay and buying the range extenders mm. and doing the same bloody thing. <laughs> the drones over yep. there, <laughs> over there, or whatever. <laughs> I, I experienced yeah. that this morning, uh, doing my sunrise shots. Uh, you know, sitting at 119 meters above me, and it's directly above me. And I got a uh, uh, a number of um, weak signal warnings, which I assumed was, you know, I had worked out that yeah, I hadn't didn't have my aerials set right for it sitting right above me. I I was looking at the sunlight, pointing my controller at the sunlight. While the thing was above my head. <laughs> mm. Yep. That can work too. Yeah, you could do that, but then you can't really yeah. see what's going on. So no, no. <laughs> and at that stage, I was too busy looking at my screen. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, that's it. How long's the recording been going for, Keith? It's, it's been going been. for an hour and thirty minutes. Nice. Well, I might, uh, like, we can still chat, but I might, like, end it here as such. So the YouTube video will end here, and then we can, uh, I can kind of cut it at that point. Otherwise, it would just be going forever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah anyway, this is like, yeah, well, we don't even know how big the file is going to be. Who knows? Yeah. Well, thanks for the opportunity. It was, I've learned some interesting stuff. That's completely fine. We, uh, yeah, really fun to chat to you guys, and we've definitely got a lot of plans in the future. Like I said, before we're going to get someone who's you know really well versed in the whole FPV space. Yep. That would um, be so that would be really cool. I you know because like I said before, I've been running the the clothing brand for a while, and that really aligned me with the FPV world. And I realized that that was a really cool kind of market to tap into for the clothing stuff. Um, and you know, there's a lot of people in there who race competitively, but then there's also the freestyle people who just want to get really cool shit, and yeah. you know, do do the best they can around a certain area. Um, so yeah, like there's a lot of people in there that we can kind of bring on board and other future yeah. guests that we've got in plan. But I guess, uh, yeah, this was just kind of a bit of an intro. So thank you for everyone to, you know, everyone who jumped in and everyone that shared and chatted to us. It was awesome. You have to bring footage with them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Compilation of crashes. <laughs> mm. I'm sure they've got a lot. The oh, amount of... The amount of cameras they go through, like they get the little GoPro session. Most of the time, that seems to be the common one they'll go for, which is a discontinued product now, like GoPro, mm. massive oversight to discontinue something that had such a market. Um, so now they all just buy them refurbished or they try to get alternatives. But yeah, the amount of shots you'll see from these people who have just cracked the lens time and time and time again, just insane. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, 
I think it's a bit like gambling, you know, if you buy a drone, expect to crash it at some point. Yeah. <laughs> but a, um, a shed with a, um, a like steel girder roof a type affair, multiple ones. I was flying the uh, Mini through there the other day um, in cinema mode and then I thought I'm going to have a shoot through in sports mode and man I was fucking dog bollocks with that thing that was fucking awesome and then I went on YouTube and watched an FPP video I'm like oh whatever fuck off yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah oh, and I was like yeah, well, yeah I did the shed with a Mavic Mini um, but yeah it's frightening how they fly around some of those one of them with a abandoned warehouse type affair with a um, chimney stack and they uh, probably a 50 meter mm -hmm. chimney or something just flew through this building and literally straight up the chimney <laughs> out the other end and scrolled around it i'm like get out of here it's insane yeah. it's honestly yeah. remarkable what they can do it really yeah. is but yeah so if you guys have any other ideas for you know guests or topics that you'd like to discuss and definitely drop it in the group we can make that happen for I sure would. I think we should get one of the um, retailers, wholesalers, or whatever, come and talk to us about accessories and what they've got, mm. what they're used for, if they're any good. Give yep. us a discount. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. I was also, um, you know, thinking it'd be awesome to have some like drone photographers or videographers come on and, and just yeah. let us know what kind of settings they're using, how they optimize, you know, their, their footage. And um, also for me as well, I'm curious about the whole ND filters as well and how to use them properly, like how to actually make it work to your advantage. Because, you know, you can buy packs of so many ND filters and it's kind of overwhelming for someone new to know what to yeah. use and, and what to actually set your drone up, you know, what settings you have. So that could be cool. But yeah, if you guys have any ideas, definitely let us know in the community. Um, Post-production as well. So what software mm. they're using for editing. Um, so, you know, there's some good presets in some of the software that we can use. That sort of stuff is always good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I personally use Lightroom and I've got mm. about uh, 200 presets. Mm. Buy them off some um, well-known photographers and it changes a photo. When you, when you take a photo and you go, oh, this is mint, and then you chuck <laughs> a preset on it, it just changes it completely. Mm. yeah yeah i use lightroom yeah that's it and when it comes to video editing as well like there's davinci resolve which is a completely free piece of software and it's like mm. honestly remarkable what it can do it's really powerful and it's an australian company it's uh, black magic so um yeah if you guys want to look into video editing like davinci resolve is fantastic it's a really good tool for sure i'll have to check that one out yeah, completely free, which is amazing. The way that they work it is, you know, if you buy one of their products, you get the full version, the paid version. But for everyone else, you can just download the free version at any point. You can download the latest version, which is 16, I believe. Um, yeah, and you've pretty much got as many settings as you'd need, like full control over color grading, uh, you know, lots of options for mastering the sound. Uh, all the transitions you want, everything. Like it's such a comprehensive editing program. It's completely free. So it's really remarkable. Oh yeah, cool. Thanks for dropping the link. Yeah, such a good piece of technology because that's the thing, you know, editing programs can be really expensive. But uh, yeah, if it's free, there's no reason why you shouldn't at least check it out. There's lots of tutorials out there. Cool. All right, well, I might head off so I can go and finish up what I was doing, but I really appreciate chatting to all of you guys. That's been good. No worries. Catch you next time. Thank you, gentlemen. See you later.